old M.G. Fernie, and, and I thought when I was going there, I, I got uh, $12 a week. He had to work all day long and at night. Came home for dinner, and then I think on Sunday, I don't remember about Sunday, but we used to make all of our own syrups down in the base <laughs> at, at, in the can there. Yeah. And we used to make our own carb or, or carbonic gas, too, or soda water. We used, we used to make that. Really? Yeah, I can remember they had like a rocker. Anyway, you'd, you'd put your water in the um, uh, tank, and then you'd rock it back and forth, and, be, and you'd be putting the soda Carbonic, no carbonic gas. You'd be putting carbonic gas into the thing while you're rocking, and that—that's what charges it up. And that had you went up to a certain temperature, or a certain pressure. Well, then that was enough. To, that's what you used for the fountains. Oh, wow. <laughs> and uh, I'll never forget. I started working there. He, he said, "Eat all, all you want. Don't sneak it. Eat everything. Eat all you want." Well, I think that lasted for, for about a, maybe a week. And, you ate and, him out. Uh, <laughs> that was it. I hated the sight of it. Oh, is that right? <laughs> oh, well, if you had that all day long. I guess long, yeah. That's when they had the soda right. fountains where you'd, you'd go up like that and you'd turn a little crank and the syrups would run out yeah, and then shut it off. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of them over there. Oh, and, uh, <laughs> but, Whatever. But there'll never be times like this. There'll never be times again where you were at the at the starter beginning. Oh yeah, that's true. Uh, <laughs> well, let me ask you about. Let's see, Margaret. When did you meet her? How did you meet her? I met Margaret when I was working in Akron, and I met her on a blind date. <laughs> a blind date. Blind date, and her. There were five sisters. And their father died when they were all young. Uh -huh. And she worked at Firestone, and her she and her sister, I think, worked at Firestone so that they could keep the family together and try to buy a house, which they lost eventually, which I didn't know about. But anyway, I think I hadn't been going for her for a long time, but she bawled hell out of him because I didn't pay much attention to mom and dad because she lost both of hers young mm -hmm. and oh, she'd yeah. get mad because I didn't didn't write her but I'd go home maybe once or twice a month and, but uh, I never forget that she bawled me out for it and you met on a blind date that's kind and, of and uh, some of these things I mean have happened by mm -hmm. it's just they'll never happen again to anybody. But I, I'd never want to do it again, but I still I wouldn't give it up for No and, and the time you spent with the FBI or the Bureau of Alcohol. Oh, yeah, hmm. <laughs> Those were dangerous times. Yeah, in the pharmacy there, uh, one time uh, they said to me that I would have to draw blood. Which, uh, the whole group of me, for some reason, I don't know, I'd have to draw blood. And I says, not me. I says, I never drawed blood in my life. I said, they show you how to do it in the books. I says, but I never did it. And he says, you draw blood? I says, okay, I draw blood. Well, in the Navy, they don't, they didn't draw blood like they do now. Instead of going from the top, for some reason, they go in from the side. Mm -hmm. From what I understand, that's, that's the way they used to do, although I didn't do it that way. Anyway, this fellow comes in, and he has a, an arm on him about the size of my leg. And uh, he says, uh, you're going to have trouble with me. And I said, is that right? And he says, yep. He says, no one can find where a blood vessel is. 
And I said, well, okay, we'll see. Well, he says, well, they usually have to call up and get a doctor to do it. And I said, well, we'll see. So I put a tourniquet on him. I went over his arm and I went over his arm. All at one, one place I could just feel just a slight raise. So I kept my finger there and I took my needle and went in there and hit, got it the first time. And he says, boy, he says, you must be good. <laughs> and I, says, do. I <laughs> says, I'll tell you something else. I says, this is the first day I've ever done that. And I says, you're the first one. <laughs> and he says, boy, he says, you are good then. I says, I don't know about that. But uh, oh, some of the things that happened. I was, you know, another fellow was on the switchboard. And what it was just to take, pick this woman up and take her to the hospital. So he said, I, he said, I don't like to do these. He says, you go ahead and take it. He was one of one of these accidents and things like that. And he says, no, I says, you take it. And I said, okay. So I drove out, had the address, and, and uh, come up to Dead End Street and stopped, no number. So I didn't know what to do, so I went up to one of the houses, and he says, oh, that's one of these things where you go around and the street stops starts over again, you know, on the other side. So I went out there and I found the house and just drove up. This woman comes out and she says, my God, can you do something? I says, I don't know. So I went in, <laughs> here's this woman that started to deliver. And I didn't know what to do. But I always heard of having sheets around, you know. So, and instruments, but it didn't have any instruments. So anyway, I went in and, and uh, took off my, had my blues on, and took off my shirt and all. And anyway, she got some sheets and got her to the side of the bed. I got it wasn't too long. Here we got a baby boy. And I don't know what the hell to do, but anyway, uh, I pounded on him and like they tell you, he started, started crying. So I thought, well, what do I do now? So I asked her if she had something I could tie the cord with. Well, her sister comes out with a piece of string, and I says, no, that won't work. So I says, you've got some bias tape, you know, that that's heavy. And uh, so I said, uh, we've got something I can cut this with. Well, then she comes out with a razor blade. And I says, no, if you get some scissors. So I threw the scissors in the water and boiled them well. So I cut the cord and then I, then I said, then you wait, you know, here you got to spurt the blood and that's all. And, and uh, you don't know what to do. So I don't know what to do. So it was around two o'clock in the morning. They didn't have a phone. So I had to drive someplace with one of these all night things. Uh, where, I, where they had a phone. So I called in the dispensary and uh, a nurse's name I can remember and uh, I, I forget what her name Maybe anyway, the doctor's name was Monroe, but anyway I said to her, I said, what do I do now? I says, she says, what do you mean? I says, I got a baby. She says, I don't know. She says, we like call the doctor. Well, the doctor comes, and he is an, an intern doctor. You know, they pulled him out of out of Michigan, yeah. and they ask him what to do. He says, "I don't know." <laughs> he says, "Wait till I call the hospital." So he calls the hospital. Oh, O'Brien was this nurse's name. I remember that. Now. So he calls the hospital, and he was still on the phone talking, discussing it. And I told him, I says. I says, I'm going back. I says, oh, no. He says, well, just put her in the ambulance and bring her in. So I go back and the neighbor comes over and we take her to get her out and put some blankets in the stretcher. You know, there's Navy stretchers, they're just metal. Yeah. And so I got blankets in that. And the only thing you can do to keep them from sight is just use a belt to put them to the side. And she hadn't, had, didn't lose consciousness at all during this, wide awake. And 
she says, I've always wanted to ride in one of these with the, <laughs> with the red lights and the sirens. Well, we weren't allowed to use sirens. We could use red lights, but we weren't using, <clears throat> couldn't use the sirens. So I turn on the sirens. <clears throat> so I get in out to uh, the causeway in Miami, and here a policeman comes up, or a motorcycle comes up. And we were, as I say, we weren't supposed to be doing that, so he says, what's the trouble? I says, I've got a woman here, I've got to get to the hospital. He, he says, follow me. <laughs> and we take off for the hospital. And I get to the hospital, got the car parked, and I go in. And the, the nurse says, uh, can I help you out, I think? I said, yeah. I said, I've got a woman out here. She said, well, we'll bring her in. I said, I also got a baby. A baby? I said, yeah. You can't bring the baby in. I said, what? You can't bring the baby in if it wasn't born in the hospital. So I says, get me the OD. She says, he's asleep. I says, I don't care. So he got on the phone and I told him how this happened. He said, get me that nurse on the phone again. And he got her on the phone and he reamed her out and he says, what's he going to do with the baby? So they brought her in, but they did have to leave her out in the hallway because of not being sterile conditions and all that. But anyway, I told this one nurse, what older one, I said, now this is what happened. And I says, I don't know, I said, you better look at it, see whether it's all right or not, where it tied the baby. She's, she looked, she said, oh, that's holding all right. She said, we'll, we'll, we, well, no, they, she said, I'll check it out. She said, she'd take it out. So anyway, by that passed, and then about, oh, it was about a week after that, I get a phone call. So I go to the hospital. This woman's laying there with all these other women around. I guess they'd been ribbing her about it. She was just red as a beet. She wanted to thank me for taking care of things for her. She wanted to know my address and so forth. Anyway, I told her that. And, uh, it was around, must have been around Christmas time because mom was over in Akron. So I called her up and the telephone was telling her about it. And she couldn't get over it either. Then later on with this woman didn't write mom a letter about it. But. And the trouble of it is, when you're gone, it's gone. Yeah. I mean, who, who else is going to know about, about these things? It uh, makes you wonder.